thank you, Robert, Robert Haycockson, for being here for the first time in Romania. And uh, together, and being one with Seda Bajan, thank you very much. You. With uh, Bilgin Janaz and SG Irmez. And, and, and we have here uh, the whole story of our lives perform it by uh, Lily Wang. Thank you very much. What, 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 what a power, what an energy. Robert, what is all about this? About opening what? It's opening up to who you really are. It's all about love. And the thing I've noticed traveling throughout the whole world, the thing that everyone almost everyone has in common with everyone else in the world is that they do not love themselves. We are hating, hating ourselves. Sometimes. Yes. And what we really need to do, and the music helps us, that's, that's my mission, to create the music that when you listen to it, it helps you open up to who you really are, to see that inner beauty. Uh, but most of all, to realize that you are sacred. How can you actually love yourself if you don't realize you're a sacred being? You're part of the whole, the whole sacredness. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's happening. And, and what Lily's doing with the energy, it's, it's helping you to open up your heart mm -hmm. to who you really are, to your real power. And you can see the goddess energy there, the feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And this feminine energy is part of all of us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men don't realize that. They're always struggling to just be macho. Mm -hmm. But the real power is in the feminine energy because that's the energy that connects you with your sacredness. The real power in the feminine energy, the goddess, the Power of Woman, one of your last albums. Yes. Yes, yes Robert. Uh, it is so, so, so many things to say, uh, to tell about your uh, remarkable uh, life history and uh, for the fact that you, you have passion, you have passion of life in your, when you are singing and you are um, healing. And you, you have to, we have to maybe to, to start with this, about the studies that they make of, of your, the effect, the coxon effect of your music. You know, I have a very intimate and powerful connection with Romania, although I've never been here. Um, I was not the one that asked them to do it, but um, some people decided to do a research project mm. in uh, orphanage here in Romania and it was a group of children between ages I think three and eight mm. and they all had severe attention deficit so they could not focus for more than 30 seconds on something they were all over the place and interestingly two of the children uh, in the group were autistic and they were not speaking and one of the one of the well, all the children were mentally, emotionally, physically abused. Mm -hmm. But one child especially, he was so affected that his whole day was spent hiding under a table. How sad that hiding, is. Hiding, yes. Hiding under a table. Mm -hmm. And so they took uh, one of my CDs called The Silent Path. The Silent Path. And uh, we're going to be doing a piece from that tomorrow yeah. night. Yeah. Um, very special. Uh, they played this music for 45 days, nonstop, continuously for the children, very, but very, very softly, not as if they have to sit there and listen to it, mm -hmm. just creating that energy. And because they're in an orphanage, they're not going anywhere. They're staying there. So they did this for 45 days. And after 45 days, all the children were, uh, what might say, cured of attention deficit. And so they could play with toys for 30 minutes instead of 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, one of the 
autistic children decided to start speaking. I can comment on that after. Wow. Why? A miracle. A miracle. Yes. Uh, but the child that was hiding under the table all the time actually became the group leader. It totally turned him around. He was the, the head child in the group then, and everyone was following him. He was not afraid anymore. What happened there? They did not use any drugs. It was, uh, you know, there's a popular drug for, uh, mm -hmm. for this called Ritalin. Mm -hmm. And in North America, it's, it's, they eat it like candy, you know, for the children. But it was just the music. Mm -hmm. And the silent path. You know, the first piece on there is towards the light. Towards the light. The last piece is the light. Mm -hmm. And so these children are being bathed in the light. And it's changing their vibrational frequency. Because so many, so many of the children that come in to this world now, um, they're, they don't feel connected to this. That's what's with, with most of the autistic children. I know there's many types of autism, but the, one of the basic things is that they don't, they're outside of their body and their body is trying to operate in this world. Um, what the music did for that child, because the music, I would, you know, where does creativity come I, from? I feel this music comes from what you might say, heaven. Mm -hmm. So his, his body is down here, but his consciousness is wanting to be out there where it feels wonderful. So if you can create heaven on earth with the music, then he comes in and feels good about it. I've had much experience with autistic children who use my music, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the explanation I can give, and that's the explanation they give me. Mm -hmm. So that, that's quite amazing. And then the child that uh, was not afraid, hiding under the table anymore, and was out there, he was in his power. Yes. The power is the mm -hmm. master. And the Salem Path in 1995, become a hit not only in Canada, in, the, in France. Oh, know. yeah, over many, many parts of the world. Uh, yes. All over North America. France, it was number one for five years. So yeah. I remember the first time I went to France to perform. Do you expect it to, to be like that? So to have so, a tre tre tremendous uh, success with the sound? I don't expect anything. Oh, <laughs> beautiful answer. Yes. <clears throat> We have to, I think, for me, the whole point of uh, life is to really live, you have to realize that when you're in synchronicity with the universe, that's real life. That's living. Mm -hmm. So, also in writing the music, there has to be an intent. Uh, you know, people don't realize that the, the, the famous classical masters, Mozart, Beethoven, uh, you know, they, all of these masters, you don't read it in the books, but if you read their letters that they wrote to their friends, what they were trying to do and what they were accomplishing was bringing people, what they would have said then, closer to God. What we might say now, bringing us closer to our true selves, who we really are. Mm -hmm. And to write the music that will help the people, you have to have some sort of pure intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my intent has always been that people will feel wonderful after they listen to my music, mm -hmm. but also that it will help them open doors in their consciousness to greater possibilities, greater probabilities. Because then they realize, first of all, that they're, they're really beautiful. And the other big thing, that they deserve the best. And that they can do anything. You know, nothing is impossible. I've seen so much magic so far in this beginning of my life here. 
so so much magic that I, you could tell me anything that's happened, and I said, sure, of course, it can happen. I've seen the magic, and I've seen the magic with the music, because we, you know, when you listen to music, what, what is happening, your whole body, every cell in your body um, has a mission to um, try to vibrate with its um, atmosphere, mm -hmm. with its environment. So if you put a certain music in, the, all your cells in your body want to vibrate to that frequency. So if you have the right music, they're going to vibrate like they're going to shine. They're going to be the light. And you're going to start loving yourself, your body, yourself, all of you. And not starting by loving everyone else. That's an excuse for not loving yourself. But you'll start loving yourself and then you, when you love yourself dearly, you are healed. And then you're able to love others infinitely because you've experienced love. And that's the aim with the music, always to create that um, energy of love so that you can start vibrating with that. Yes, I, I feel that I have no questions further question <laughs> I have no further answers <laughs> oh yes this is this is the beginning of uh, and beginning and the end of of our minds right yes Robert you you are you are the best selling art new age artists and um, well it one is of them one one of them and um, your music heal our, our souls and you have a particular technique the soul masterpiece right can you tell tell us a few words because it's beautiful our body is an orchestra you put some french horn there because he has a kidney uh, deficiency energy uh, uh, chi deficiency and right well th there's a few things i can say um, one thing is a soul masterpiece. Um, I started uh, many years ago um, channeling music through for people. As we, we said um, in, when we were talking about Seda in the other program. Um, and then we decided to change the name and the focus. Um, and to not I used to do them um, when I toured the world. I'd take two days and I would do the people's soul masterpieces. And the, the universe taught me a real big lesson a year, not even a year ago, when I was in uh, Vladivostok, Russia. That's north of Japan. Mm -hmm. And the organizers had me booked every half hour to do a piece of music. I did 43 compositions in I don't know, two and a half days and that was just whew, 43 43 wow. yeah and these were 10 minutes long you know 10 12 minutes and I got home and Lily and I discussed that and said let's do this a different way and so we do this music in my studio with from a photograph Sure, I'll do one on stage, you know, at, at an event. But for the other people that want it, I, I do it in my studio from a photograph. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, better equipment there. And mm -hmm. I can take a bit more time and that. And Lily um, does something very amazing. She uh, looks at the photo and is connected with the music and them too. And she creates their... Um, design their sacred code. And with that sac within that sacred code, there's a mantra. So she, uh, you know, we record the mantra too for them. And they work together because everyone has a geometric pattern in the universe, a mathematical pattern, I should say, that resonates with their mm -hmm. higher self, that resonates with the, the master within them. And by having that, it's like looking at a mandala. 
-hmm. how, how a Mandela f affects you, but imagine if that Mandela was connected exactly with the music that you have to listen to. Mm -hmm. And so these two things go together, and uh, uh, it's all done in this new place we moved to in the mountains, in Mont Gabriel. Mont Gabriel, yeah. yes. Full of angels there. Full of angels. Um, you were mentioning about, uh, you know, the French horns for yes. the, the, kidneys the kidneys and that. Well, uh, we give a workshop, mm -hmm. um, Your Body, a Symphony of Life. And uh, I think symphony. that's what you were talking Beautiful, about. yes. I, I was doing some channeling one day, and they fed me all sorts of information about the body is just like a, a symphonic orchestra with every cell is a player in that orchestra mm -hmm. and the different organs, as an example, the different organs in the body represent the different sections of the orchestra. Um, let's say the liver as an example um, would be the oboe. Huh. And, and, and because the oboe can have two sounds, it can sound really complaining and, you know, and, and it can also sound very sweet, the most beautiful melodies. Uh, some of the most beautiful classical melodies that were created for oboe. And the liver, that has to do with uh, anger, it has to do with complaining, yes. but it also has to do f with passion for life. The passion comes from the liver also. Yes, yes. the passion comes from the liver, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And compassion comes from kidneys. The joy, or what we, we, we're saying, we're, we're building in new concerts. The joy comes from uh, alegria, alegria, comes from the heart area. Yeah. But when you, you know, when you put those three things together, when you have passion for life, you can have compassion for others, and you will have compassion for others. You put those two together, mm -hmm. uh, and you get the trinity, you get the joy, the mm -hmm. happiness. But that trinity, what's in the center of that, mm -hmm. is really your heart. Once you open up to those aspects of yourself, it's pure love for you and the universe. Yes, pure love. And you are here near Seda Bhajan mm -hmm. with pure love. <laughs> uh, definitely. It, 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 it's, uh, it's amazing how what she's doing and I'm doing, we're almost mirroring each other in many things. Mm -hmm. and, and um, we were on a TV program this morning and she was talking a bit about her uh, uh, mission. Mm -hmm. And I said to her after, wow, you know, that this, this really, now I know why I'm working with you. You know, there's so much going on there. And of course, there's, there's a lot going on in her life now, you know, and because she's into the synchronicity. Yes. Where you don't have to try. You don't have to force yeah. things. Synchronicity doesn't work with force. Synchronicity works with being. And when you're being, you're in mm -hmm. the perfect timing, you're in the perfect space, mm -hmm. and you're in the perfect gravity to pull as a magnet the perfect things to you so that you can uh, be in, I wouldn't say accomplish your mission because it's not accomplishing. You can be in your mission. And that's what she's doing. I, she told me that she's uh, been, she's connected with Kitaro, and you, you got to tell me a bit about that. Yes, yeah. please, about being in your mission with Kitaro <laughs> and Domo <laughs> yes. Records. Yes, I... Actually, last year, Kitaro came to Istanbul for a concert uh, in March. Mm -hmm. And then I went, uh, I was the first person who was saying hello in Turkey. Oh. <laughs> yes. I went to his uh, press conference mm -hmm. and then I, I told him that I'm the first mantra, first and the only mantra singer mm -hmm. in this country and I would like to uh, say hello for my country. And uh, he was very happy. The ambassador. For yes, mantra <laughs> ambassador. Yeah, mantra yes. ambassador. <laughs> And then we became friends. He mm -hmm. listened to my music and he liked the music. Mm -hmm. And I talked about my mission. And he's working since years uh, for peace, creating peace mm -hmm. in the world. And if you listen to Kitaro's music, actually you feel it in your heart. Yeah. And during my yeah. teenagers, I was always, I was only listening Kitaro. 
after coming from school and then I was listening, I was very listen. much yeah. connected. He, he was the only new age artist I ever, ever listened <laughs> yes. to. Oh, everyone said, oh, you know this new, I don't, I don't listen to that stuff. Yeah. I listen to Kataro and I mm -hmm. listen to movie music and classical music, you know? Yeah, he's the pioneer actually. Mm -hmm. After yeah. his music, mm -hmm. new age was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mm -hmm. named, uh, to be able to name the sort of music of Kitaro, yeah. new age. Yeah. yeah, is yeah. that true? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. And then uh, he went back, back, he flied back to United States, and then mm -hmm. he uh, wrote me, mm -hmm. and how about representing your CDs in your, uh, United States? Because I was releasing a new album at that mm -hmm. time. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll think about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then uh, I arranged my companies. Uh, and then now Domo Records is the uh, company of Kitaro. They are representing me since 2014. Uh, my, all of my CDs all over the world. And they are arranging some events and concerts for me. Of course, because I am that I am. Yeah, this is the, the biggest just, reason. I was thinking exactly that same thing. That's that's the pure example mm -hmm. of it. Yes. Being in the synchronicity, and yeah. you can only do that when you realize mm -hmm. I am that I am. Yes, but I uh, I was tuned to my mission with the music of Robert. Yeah, this is yeah how it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I decided to change my life, and then I went to his event. And then uh, he invited me on the stage and yeah. he played that. Uh, I think the universe invited you on stage. Yeah. I was just, uh, you know, uh, you know. Something, something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That he, he mm -hmm. it helped me a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Robert. For <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm well, you, here. You're <laughs> yeah, yes, with it, the help of you. And it's the moment also uh, to be. Uh, grateful and to thank you from um, uh, the biggest private university and um, from Romania, Spiro Hallett University. Uh, it's honored to grant you a diploma of excellence wow. for uh, your entire activity, for uh, helping us to d develop and to find the way to our true self. And this is sustainable education, no other thing. Thank you, Robert. So Spiro Hallett University, it's your Thank home you. now each time you come in Romania. And maybe we can do some project together in, uh, uh, in studies about Coxon F effect. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I'm so honored. Please, please. Ah, thank, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Wow. This means a lot to me. It really means a lot to me. And... Um, One of the, you know, the, the, one of the first scientific projects was to prove that the music can do something was, actually the first one was in this country. Mm -hmm. I've done other ones and about plants and, and yes. various things, but this was the first and this, wow, this, this means a lot. Thank you. This is a surprise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, we are in the middle of our program. And uh, I know again something beautiful will happen. I thought uh, maybe I should play a piece off of the Goddess CD. Um, that was my first CD of piano music, even though I've been playing piano all my life. Mm -hmm. And I, maybe I've been hiding behind orchestras and that in my orchestration and choirs and that and <clears throat> I finally decided I need to do a piano piece mm -hmm. so I what really happened um, I was in Beraloci which is southern way southern Argentina almost to the penguins mm -hmm. and I was doing um, someone's uh, channeled music and a lady came for her music and she sat down <clears throat> And she said, the music's not for me. Uh, and she explained that she wanted the music to play in her office for her patients. And she's a therapist with battered women. And mm -hmm. in South America, that's 
a big thing. It's a big thing all over the world. But there, I really, really have noticed it. And this amazing piece of music came out. And actually, the music, I could hear the music when she was walking into the room. And the piece came out, in, it was probably 11 minutes long. But it seemed so structured. It seemed like the type of piece that a composer would sit there and take two months to write and perfect. But the piece was already perfected and it had introduction, it had themes, various themes, but they developed into other things. And uh, my, uh, one of my managers was there that weekend and he said, you know, maybe you should, that should go on a CD. So that gave me the idea to uh, um, create a CD of piano music uh, that could represent women stepping into their power. And when I recorded it, I, on a few pieces, I added a bit of violin and cello, you know, to give a bit of variety to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the piece I'm gonna play here is not that one, but it's a um, piece called Changes. And I channeled that for another lady in South America, someone from uh, Santiago, Chile. Mm -hmm. And she had a, amazing job. She was a, a government lawyer and for a woman in, in Chile that's a great job. Uh, but she you know had this feeling that a lot of us have, well I'm not really on my path. Like Lily, who, the architect. <laughs> I'm not really on my path. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> so I did her music and interestingly I, I gave her music, she listened to it, but the, the same week that uh, this album, The Goddess, The Power of Woman, came out on the market in the stores was the same week that she published her first book. And she's now a, a well-known writer. And um, wow. so the music, and not just my music, there's as much music out there, said as music, and uh, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of people with that mission to help you do things with, let the music be the medicine. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna play this little piece. And it, it's, a, it's a fast piece and it called Changes because she went through so many changes in her life quite quickly.
changes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, Robert. Maybe the, the time to, to tell us the story of your relation with crayon writings and what represent for you. Okay, I can tell you how I first met Lee Carroll, yes. who's the original channel, channel of Cryon. Mm -hmm. um, this was after The Silent Path was quite famous. And I get a call from Lee Carroll, and I didn't really know who he was. He didn't know who I was either, so it doesn't matter. But um, he wanted permission to use The Silent Path because whenever he was channeling on stage. He played the silent path in the background and helped him channel properly. And so I said, why not? You know, it's a good advertising. Because he, they were recording the channels and, you know, selling them. Mm -hmm. And uh, about four or five months later, uh, there was an event in Montreal. His French publisher is not in Paris. It's in, he, they're in Montreal. And uh, so there was an event that he was going to be uh, as one of the speakers, one of the guest speakers and channelers. And there was a few other people. I think Greg Braden was there also. Greg Braden. That yeah. weekend. And uh, they asked mm -hmm. me, I, I, I know the, the publishers very well, and they asked me to come and do a concert there. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, why not? So I went there to do the concert, and when I'm uh, setting up in the morning, we're doing sound checks, uh, Lee Carroll walks in to do his microphone check, and this is where we first met. But it was almost like we knew each other. It was like, you know, we'd been related for many, many, many lives. And then he said to me, uh, wow, you know, you're here. You know, we do a meditation before the channel, a guided meditation. It would be awesome if you could play for it. And uh, I said, yeah, sure, why not? It would be fun. And uh, then he said, well, you know, during the channel, <laughs> you think you could play some of the silent path, you know? And I said, no way, you know? <laughs> no, no, I, I was joking with him. <laughs> and uh, I said, sure, why not? I'll, I'll do that. So that was our first time working together. But this was, um, when I play for the cryon channels it's it's interesting because you know it could be half an hour long could be 45 minutes could be almost an hour and so i'm making the music i'm channeling the music through lee's channeling i'm channeling uh and the energy's coming from cryon and interestingly i know where to go with the music because i know I'm hearing, I'm being fed what comes out of his mouth before it comes out of his mouth so that I can be prepared with where I want to play the music on the, the piano to, to create that support for people to get to that level of consciousness where they, mm -hmm. they understand things and they, 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 they absorb the, the knowledge. Um, and to be able to do that a few years before that, actually, before I wrote The Silent Path, mm -hmm. I was, um, I went to a metaphysical church in Montreal. It's called Unity, and they're, they're all over the world, but they're very metaphysical. It's not like, it's sure, it's a Christian thing and that, but it's not your structured type church. And it's into, you know, a new thought and, you know, how to use the mind and that. And, and I walked in there one day. I used to go there as a kid, and I didn't go for years. And I was delivering some uh, cassettes there once because they were selling my cassettes. And the girl said, oh, there's this new teacher here. He's just amazing. You have to come. I said, I don't go to church. <laughs> she said, well, come on Wednesday night. He gives a talk, you know, a one-hour thing. And so I went to Wednesday night, and he was playing my music. Mm -hmm. And... I met him at the end and said, uh, I'm the one that wrote that. And we became best friends. And he invited me to be the music director there. And so it wasn't like church. I had to play the little songs that people sing. But he did these really long, at least half hour guided meditations, just channeling out of his head. And so I played the music for that. So little did I know it was really totally preparing me for, um, for Lee Carroll. 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even before that, many years before, I was very much into channeling. My wife then channeled the, the 12 Atlanteans, mm -hmm. and I was her director, but I, I also trained other people to channel. So for me to meet with Lee Carroll and have this guy doing this weird stuff on stage, you know, what, what is it. channeling? I think channeling means total surrender from the person who was channeling. He became a, a well, vessel of... You know, channeling probably sounds very weird to a lot of people. Mm. What you're really doing is, because, you know, we say it's cryon, but it's really part of your higher self because we're all one. Yes, Grand is just a name. Yeah, you're just, yeah, yes, it's a name. In fact, you know, it's a name. Before it's a the pretty name. Pretty good what? name, good mm -hmm. marketing name too. Mm -hmm. But, because uh, <laughs> uh, they all go there and they keep crying and crying, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, everyone channels. Yeah. Every composer in the world has mm -hmm. to channel. Every mm -hmm. artist has to channel. Mm -hmm. And, Everyone doing anything creative, you're really channeling. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not some weird thing that ooh, that's it can be. You know, people make it up to be spooky, and a lot of people that do that are in that business try to make it that way because mm -hmm. you know they like the theater and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. um, it's a normal thing. And what it, when you're really channeling, you're getting in touch with who you really are, and the pure channel is through the heart. It's not through the ego. There's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. It's like writing music from the ego mm -hmm. or writing music from the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a choice. Is a choice? It's Is always a choice? a choice. Always a choice. You always have the choice to go with the ego or the heart. Mm -hmm. And, but, if you go with the heart, you have to learn to trust. Yeah, you have to yeah. learn to trust. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to be in the synchronicity purely mm -hmm. with the universe, you have to trust. Mm -hmm. When I, I bring someone up on stage, and there's 2,000 people out there mm -hmm. looking at me, mm -hmm. what would happen if nothing came out? <laughs> no music came out. <laughs> yeah, I have to trust. And, it's, and that has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the ego. Because if you believe, okay, if you believe, if I'm mm -hmm. up here and I believe I can have a piece of music come out, I can change my mind because you can always change your belief system. Mm -hmm. But I know that I can do it. That's the difference. Once you know it, mm -hmm. you can't change that. When you believe something, it's, it's from what other people have been telling you. But when you, you really... You can use the music to do this, to get to that point where you, you're in touch with yourself so much that you just know. There's mm -hmm. not a question there. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with the ego. Mm -hmm. It has to do with you claiming yes. who you really are in life. You know when you find your channel. Yeah. But you know the real trick in that? Yeah. The real trick of being the master is to realize and see the potential for masterhood in everyone else. If your ego is involved, you can't do that. So you're never the, you're the false master. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And instead of finding our channels, we are zap zapping through <laughs> hundreds of <laughs> chan television channels. <laughs> yes, yes. This is in fact the symptom of, our, of uh, ourselves, <clears throat> of within. Because we don't love ourselves enough, we're always trying to mm -hmm. get the other people to love us. Yeah. So, uh, is my hair right, or am I, uh, am I mm -hmm. tall enough? Um, you know, am I smart enough? Am I this, am I that? Mm -hmm. Of we, course, we are not enough smart. <laughs> I am not enough smart. Oh, I, I, you are. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. We, are all, we have uh, only 10 minutes from, uh, from our program, so... Um, <clears throat> I, we we nev have never uh, got the chance to speak about your early childhood, about your two grandmothers. Maybe a, wor a word about it. My two grandmothers were 
purposely on my path to, to help me be here today. The first grandmother, she had the piano. Mm -hmm. So when I was, uh, you know, less than two years old, she was teaching me piano pieces. And when I was nine years old, she said to me if I, that if I took real piano lessons, to play, you know, classical music lessons, yeah. she would give me her piano. And I know that was a sacrifice for her, but I, I f was so honored by that. She and never so, had the chance to, to have uh, uh, piano music lessons herself. Just one, one uh, lesson. She had one piano one, lesson one, in her whole life, lesson. but she could play all sorts of pieces on the piano. Mm -hmm. And she, I guess she knew that uh, it would help me to have the real lessons. So mm -hmm. uh, at nine years old, I got the piano, the old upright piano. Mm -hmm. And um, I started taking piano lessons and, and uh, officially learning how to play. Officially. <laughs> well, I, I already knew how to play, but just, mm -hmm. you know, to, to learn more. And so I had that, I had two paths in my, my early youth. I had that path of the music. Mm -hmm. And then the other grandmother, she was a metaphysician studying, uh, you know, all this new age stuff about how to use the mind in that. And she, I was seven, eight years old. She was teaching me all those things. But it was only when, just a bit before I um, decided to write this kind of music, that I ended up sticking the two paths to uh, becoming one path. Mm -hmm. And this is why wow. I'm awesome. doing this music. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it was an honor and allowed me to, to start from here. Thank you, Lily Wang for uh, showing what is the real power of our body. Thank you, Esgi Rumez, for being here. Yes, thank you. Beautiful yeah. violin, beautiful. Be beautiful. Yes. And amazing flute, too. Yes. Ah. Bilgin Janaz. I, 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 I will start to learn a uh, Turk beautiful Turkish uh, language. <laughs> and thank you, Seda Bajan. It was an honor. Robert Hadcockson, this is only the third time in Romania. I'm hardly waiting uh, each, each, uh, each summer, each spring, each winter, and each autumn, especially, to, to, to feel your music and to, to feel Thank you. Thank you. work. Thank you again. We want to be back. Yes. Yeah, I will. 